Hello, and welcome to the Symposium on Pharmaceutical Quality for Global Stakeholders. I am Mike Kopcha. I'm the Director for the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality at the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research within the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The topic of my presentation today is an international commitment to pharmaceutical quality. A quality product of any kind consistently meets the user's expectations. And that's pretty apparent when you talk about things like computers, automobiles, or cell phones, and drugs should be no different. So a quality drug product consistently meets the expectations of the user, and the user in this case would be the patient and or consumer. Patients expect safe and effective medicine with every dose that they take. And it's what gives patients confidence in their next dose of medicine. So the era of COVID-19 has made our jobs harder, but many of the issues we're dealing with are ones we've been bringing to light for many years. Things such as the complexity within the pharmaceutical manufacturing supply chain, drug shortages, decision-making that's based on changing science and risk. What I'd like to do is to give you a little bit of context by giving you a brief overview of the history of pharmaceutical quality. In 1938, there were over 100 deaths from the elixir sulfonilamide. This led then to the establishment of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, which required safety studies for all new drugs. Then in 1962, children were born with severe birth defects from thalidomide, and that led then to amendments to the FD&C Act called the Kefauver harris Amendments. And this stated that not only did a sponsor need to prove that drugs are safe, but that they are effective as well. And then because of the uh, serious injuries and deaths from the global heparin crisis in 2015, that led to the establishment within the FDA of the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality. And this integrates functions and elevates FDA's commitment to quality. So now we know that um, disruptions are perfect timing for uh, uh, good innovations. And let's face it, COVID-19 is a major disruption, so it has led for a perfect timing for new innovations. I always hear people talking about trying to drive towards a new normal. What I want to do, especially as it comes to pharmaceutical quality, is drive to a better normal. However, in order to do that, different thinking is required, and we'll talk about some of that different thinking as we go through this presentation. So the topics for my uh, presentation today are, are seen on this slide. Talk about the state of pharmaceutical quality or the state of the industry of pharmaceutical quality, around pharmaceutical quality, patient and physician perceptions of pharmaceutical quality, drug shortages, which I like to call an old new problem. And, I, and I'm going to ask you then at the end to join us in a commitment or a continued commitment to improving quality within the pharmaceutical industry. So let's start out with the state of pharmaceutical quality. Much is said about pharmaceutical quality in the US, but how is it really? To address this, we now release a report every year. And that report uh, uh, highlights select quality indicators and trends to one, inform regulatory decision-making and surveillance. Secondly, to offer more transparency to patients and consumers about the state of pharmaceutical quality. And third, to engage the pharmaceutical manufacturing industry in a commitment to quality. In general, overall pharmaceutical quality is pretty good, arguably better than ever before. But that doesn't mean there aren't issues, and it doesn't mean that there are no areas where we can continue to improve. For example, facilities in some regions perform better than others based on inspections. Of course, there may be explanations for this finding, including first-time inspections. FDA has performed a higher percentage of inspections in these regions pre-COVID, and you'll hear more about the state of pharmaceutical quality, as well as manufacturing assessments in the absence of on-site facility inspections and our surveillance activities uh, that we've been doing later on in this program. So my intent here is kind of to lay out the framework for the rest of the symposium at a high level and to whet your interest and appetite in some of the uh, upcoming presentations that will be uh, um, given later on. 
So if we have a report on what we know, what we, what the FDA, what the US FDA knows about quality, what do patients and physicians think about quality? It's a question that we wanted to get an answer to or get answers. So we did a quick project with WebMD to first probe consumers and then physicians about their knowledge and perception of drug quality. One big caveat here though, is that the date of these surveys, which were conducted in the mid to late 2018, Needless to say, much has changed since then, but for us, it established a good baseline. We captured over 3,000 visitors to WebMD.com and over 600 physicians in their network. To look at the perceptions of drug manufacturing, we asked, do you believe, do you believe drugs manufactured outside the U.S. and sold in the U.S. adhere to strict manufacturing standards and regulations required by the FDA? Sadly, nearly three quarters do not believe or are not sure that drugs manufactured outside the US adhere to strict manufacturing standards. Yet over 70% of the manufacturing facilities for active ingredients are located outside the US. We ask consumers and physicians as to why they think drugs manufactured outside the US are of lower quality they had the same four reasons, or same four top reasons. Purity, health and sanitation, inferior active ingredients, and bad reputation. Now we can debate whether these reasons are scientifically valid or not, but these are driving perceptions, and perceptions are the individual's reality, so we need to pay attention to those. We also asked consumers if they experienced difficulty filling prescriptions due to shortages. Over one third may have experienced this. Those who did were more likely to have used a generic drug in the past three years than a brand name drug. This is unacceptable. So during this time, we've become extremely aware of potential and active shortages in the wake of COVID-19, but shortages have been a problem for patients for a long time now. The agency released a drug shortage report last year and with some sobering findings. Over 60% of drugs newly in shortage were due to quality issues with the process or the product. Again, with the process or the product. Over 60% of all drug products in shortage are generic drugs. Over 60% of all approved generic drug applications are not marketed. This contributes to a frustrating situation for the FDA as we expend the same resources to approve a product, whether it is eventually marketed or not. And yet we still see that shortages persist. Fortunately, this report identified three root causes of drug shortages. As this event today is not dedicated to drug shortages, I will focus on the root cause most immediately relevant to quality, and that is the second bullet, which is uh, bolded. And that is that the market does not recognize and reward manufacturers for having mature quality management. So let me explain briefly what I mean by quality management. Product quality is what gives patients consumers in every dose. I have high confidence in the quality of products in the US market. Process quality is controlling manufacturing risks to provide a quality drug product. This is then what gives manufacturers confidence in every batch they release to the market. I have good confidence in the quality of processes making drugs for the US market. Quality management is using a performance and patient focus to identify areas of improvement and implement changes. This is what gives manufacturers confidence that every batch they make will be acceptable to release to the market. This is what ensures their quality product will still be available in a year or two years from now. Unfortunately, I have less confidence in how quality is managed at manufacturing facilities. There are a few key ingredients to the recipe for quality management maturity across the industry. One is a system to inform purchasers and patients about the quality management maturity of the facilities making their drugs. And you will hear more about mature quality management systems later in this program. The other is the embrace of advanced manufacturing technologies. 
and you'll hear more about companies that have successfully implemented advanced manufacturing technologies later in this program. So I will close today by asking international drug manufacturers to join us in a commitment to quality. As you've heard from Patrizia and me, international manufacturers are a key stakeholder in the public health of Americans. And you've seen from FDA's analysis, most drug shortages are a result of quality problems. As you know, our WebMD survey, patients and physicians do not trust the quality of medicines made overseas. Now the perception may be unfounded in many cases because there are plenty of quality problems in the US pharmaceutical manufacturing sector as well. I believe overall pharmaceutical quality is better than, over, is, is better than ever before but let's work together so that patients can have confidence in their. Keep in mind that we at the US FDA are patients too, and we rely on the same medicines as everyone else in the country. So let's give us all more confidence in our next dose of medicine. Thank you for the privilege of your time and enjoy the rest of the symposium.